the first night you hear him, the second night you see him, and the third night he finds you. The Empty Man, the Empty Man, the Empty Man. The Empty Man is our pick for this week uh, out of the movie chest. My pick. Uh, it was the last movie made by Fox before Disney swallowed them up. And uh, if you haven't heard of it, that's because Disney swallowed up Fox and swept this under the rug. Um, because it's an original idea. It wasn't part of the machine. So, you know, didn't fit. Toss yeah. it in the, the bucket and Act forget like about it. It doesn't exist. Exactly. Sure. Um, and it's a darker movie. And it, it so might consider it somewhat messy. Um, it swings for the fences. Um, and uh, it's a first-time director, I believe, David Pryor. Writer director, and yeah. then there's it's based on the comic by Boom Studios, um, by the same name, The Empty Man. Did not know I that. think it was, yeah, it was the way this was marketed though. It was like they showed all the cliche horror tropes, and it really doesn't do the movie justice, in my opinion, mm. because this is much more than just the cliche horror movies. It's more, I don't know if Cthulhu esque is the right word or right phrase to categorize it under, but mm. it's just more. It's bigger than that, in my opinion. Yeah. The cliche horror Delves movies into like H.P. Lovecraft, DMT yeah, kind of stuff a little bit. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so what would you guys think of it? Since I roped you into this one, yeah. What do you think, Noah? I I really liked it. I mean, I gave it four stars off the bat. It was like, I mean, all, all I would agree to like some degree. It does feel a little messy, like here mm -hmm. and there. But um, I really I couldn't really hold that against it because it was like it, it's theming. Like it's it's music score like the, all the performances were like solid I thought the the main dude and like the and the opening man the opening was like oh. such a perfect like setup I feel like for to like the, get you on board with this premise. the first Definitely. 22 minutes was a perfect short film yeah, yeah. yeah. dude yeah it was, it was extended like, yeah it was like 20 25 minutes I would say too yeah, yeah. before the credits even started mm -hmm. you know so definitely built I, the atmosphere I, yeah yeah, yeah. what would you think Matt yeah, um, I mean, I I've, I don't know if I'm not really a horror guy, so like, I've been trying to get more into them on like a on the, like a uniqueness basis on like mm -hmm. this one's special for this reason, this one's special. For this. So personally, I didn't really enjoy this movie that much. I don't think I enjoyed it more than most horror movies. I just don't think yeah. it was like stand out enough to make it like a really great horror movie for me. Um, it did have great atmosphere and a lot of other things I go into that I think it was very successful at. So that's why I don't think it's a bad movie. I just don't. I think there was a lot of like genericness of it all that didn't really stand out enough to make it something special. I don't know. Um, yeah, we, I guess we can go into it. We, I don't know. What do you think, Alex? Overall, just about everything. Yeah. No. I uh, I really liked it. I think it was like I said, the first twenty two minutes. I watched the first twenty two minutes twice just because it's it's a perfect short film. I mean, yeah. it's. It's awesome, mm -hmm. and horror is my favorite genre. If I want to like pick a genre yeah. to choose from, and I think horror just I don't know can capture everything. You know, you got the drama, you can get the the campy comedy stuff that actually is a type of humor that I enjoy. Not silly. I mean, it's silly, but it kind of lands because it is over the top, and it kind of goes with the anyway. So I just think horror is the best genre. It's my favorite one to sort of write about in cults. On top of that, it's just like right up my alley okay. so the fact that this led into it was like three films in one which is the messy part of it i think um but once we get to the like, the cult part where it's just like full send into fucking like that guy's reaction is probably everybody's reaction while watching that yeah. when he's talking about you know creating things out of thoughts and stuff like that bringing it into existence yeah. just by thinking it and saying it and whatnot and, and yeah. the guy's like this fucking gibberish, man. Or, you know, I don't know. So I really liked it. I think it was successful with a lot of things. I just think that, the, like, the B plot kind of brought it down a little bit with, like, his wife and kid and him cheating on her and stuff and not being mm -hmm. with them in the moment. But it pays off in the end just because of what happens when he finds out what he truly is or what he's being set up to be and how he was created by this cult. So it pays off. It's just getting there was the problem i think but other than that i really liked it i think the sequence when he goes to the cabin and from that from the map view when it cuts to him driving i think that was another like perfect stretch of creepy wild i mean the guy ripping out his guts and drawing on the wall and then you see the people chanting and then they mm -hmm. just turn 
and start chasing. Uh, it was great. Yeah. 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 I'd say so. Really, there was a lot of great things about it that I really sure. enjoyed. The mm-hmm. the sequences that they set up were actually really well achieved. I thought. Um, yeah. And they weren't overly hammy. A lot of them, like with the the cults, like circling the fire and then like going down to the water and like stepping towards mm-hmm. you after you step back. That's just, I mean that's that was like really well executed. Honestly, I thought it like it For built sure. it built the fear and the and the the horror of it all. And it's like modern day enough where the guys like nope. Or you're like, oh no, yep. and he just nopes <laughs> out. Yeah. So that's, I mean, good job in making your character not an idiot, you know, obviously. But yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's funny that you say, like, you enjoy the cold stuff, which I can understand why you would, but I think that's where this movie took the downward spiral of, like, not not really saying much anymore was when, like, I really like the scene with Steven Root where he's, like, the preacher mm-hmm. in this cult or whatever. And, yeah. and, yeah, and I, think I felt like. yeah, I mean, he's just great at, at most great. any role he plays. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of like thesis in that scene about like what this movie's saying about like I mean it's it's hard to like talk about it because basically it's like everything is nothing because everything <laughs> can be nothing and so yeah. nothing is just as equal as everything whatever you know empty man empty man shit um but that whole scene was like encompassing the themes and then I felt like that was probably like an hour hour 15 in maybe hour and a half but like Everything up to that point, I thought was very well done, and then after that, I felt like no theme or no actual pushing forward of anything new was happening in the movie. I felt like it just kind of sacrificed for tension and and horror sequences, which were good, but they didn't really w- didn't really grow to anything for me that that the movie was like getting at. Um, but I don't know. Then they go and they get it. It comes weird full circle at the end. But like right. you said, the the backstory of our main guy, it was like just there enough to be like, yeah, this guy's empty. He's got some tragic backstory. Um, right. We're going to probably get to that event. And like they kind of just like shove it at the end to like cover the bases for me. I don't know. I, maybe I'm maybe I'm misinterpreting the ending a little bit, too, because it is kind of confusing as fuck. Like what the fuck is like? Yeah. Going the on. ending did confuse me a little bit, but I found like. I thought, like, I thought there was, like, good theming, like, there there were, like, little bits and pieces that I, like, felt like I picked up on that Mm -hmm. they were, like, sort of pushing, were were pushing the narrative forward, and it was, like, mostly between our main guy and and the girl he's looking for, and, like, the Mm -hmm. small, like, you only get, like, a couple conversations with with them, too, but, and by the end, she's, like, fucking, she's far gone, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. He's on the bridge, baby. Yeah. (laughs) And I thought, like, every, like, <clears throat> like the buildup of that set the tone of, like, oh, this is, like, about people who are, like, searching for something, who are, like, I mean, our main dude's taking, like, antidepressants and stuff, like, you know, taking pills and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And so, I, I, had, I, my main thing was, like, our, the empty man is, like, what he's symbolizing. He's, like, he's, like, this escape for people like that. And then the occult yeah. is just, like, pounding yeah. on top of that, you know, like, People He's just the for antenna anything. for other yeah. people to communicate right. to. Yeah. To me, right. like suicide was obviously like one of the major themes of this movie, um, because mm-hmm. there's like the invisible creature killing you, and it looks just like you're committing suicide. But that's the themes of it were like packed in the first parts with like the teens killing themselves and like mm-hmm. all that, and then it it just goes to cult, which like I just feel like I've seen that in a lot of horror movies where it's like cult. You know, and I, it was well done. This cult, it was more like realistic and cool than other ones, where it seems just like they're in a backyard, fucking, you know, just cult, cult magic in or whatever the whatever the fuck. But like, I I really enjoyed the theming of the first half, and then it just kind of just disappeared after. Yeah. Um, I, I would I, I would say like the first half that you're talking about, like after the the first twenty two minutes opening scene. That was probably the weakest part for me, in my opinion, because I, I think right when it hit the cult stuff is when it took off for me. That's why it was like three separate movies in one, because mm-hmm. it felt like that part where the kids are being involved was a completely different. I don't know. I know it was like him, them calling him like the empty man to come yeah. into fruition pretty much. Mm-hmm. But I just felt like it was a different empty man type thing if that makes sense like it, it felt more yeah. of like a supernatural 
thing happening yeah. rather than like i mean i guess it is kind of supernatural but at the same time it's not really because they're speaking it into existence and yeah. i don't know i guess if you look up the tulpas or whatever it's kind of like that i mean the what it actually is oh, okay but yeah uh, speaking things into existence but yeah it was strange like you, yeah, you saying that like three separate movies um yeah, it was like the beginning. It felt like it was like setting up as like the weird, the kind of almost almost gimmicky like Candyman or like you know yeah. Bloody Mary, like that you know call it. And, yeah, and it shows up and kills you, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think the occult, while it does, it might feel you know like like manufactured or, or whatever. Um, it did just take it to a more interesting place for me too, because I was like, yeah, oh, there's like, and then Stephen Rue's character of like kind of puking this philosophy on this guy, almost like trying to rope him into it i was like mm -hmm. okay like i get like what what function this is you know i don't know it, it, it like yeah i don't know i i, I liked it i i think it elevated, elevated it for me too so maybe yeah that's just nice yeah i mean it's just different tastes like because yeah. i don't know to me this one it was good but i also felt the genericness and like overall attempts at some of the things it was doing with like the creature was very scattered and how it operated and like it's yeah. like a scary creature and then there's also just like this mystical like darkness around him that there's like whispering that the main character's hearing when we first meet him um there's like creepy head turning like it's all like there the multiple days while the creature's going to stalk you you know like they condensed it to 3 days in this movie but to me I don't maybe I just shit on those types of horror movies where they won't go outside the boundary of like convention in a way mm -hmm. And this one just kind of like started felt like throwing stuff at the wall, like pretty creepy, pretty scary, you know, like, and I don't know, it just kind of felt like Stephen King light overall for me, where it was like really trying to do like this darkness encompassing a small town with like the, the towns, all people are all like depressed and shit and overall very well done. Cause it's like these, pe these people in this cult are going to be like the depressed people in the world who don't have the meaning and they're just finding this weird meaning with the empty man. I don't, maybe, I maybe need to watch it again. It just the genericness hit me at a few po few points, and I just couldn't get over it slightly. Yeah, but that's most horror for me. So I think I'm just kind of on the lower end of it because I don't know. Yeah, it was very successful in a lot of other aspects. Um, yeah, I mean, the yeah, filmmaking in general. He he he's worked with David Fincher for like all his filmography. So mm -hmm. like, you can tell he like picked up on point for sure. Yeah. The editing too, like some of the yeah. transitions, like you said, the big, uh, like map transition. Yeah, and the, the light super good. Yeah. 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 Another main highlight was the sound design. I thought. Um, mm -hmm. I just listened to an interview with Zach Kregers, who's the uh, the director of Barbarian, actually, and he was just mm -hmm. talking about how important sound design is for like horror, especially. And yeah. so I was like thinking about it in this movie, and like that that just builds so much of the primal like. Sa like the like a human like can hear yeah. things and like it's, it's, like, it's like making you tone. yeah like yeah. think that you're like something's near you or that sound is yeah. unnatural so it's I, I need to go away like so it's they did a really good job in this movie but it just kind of emphasized how important it is especially for horror for me about like creating that atmosphere and creating that ambiance of of horror that you need you know mm -hmm. I, I just think the the empty man's design was kind of shoddy in some scenes that's but like when he, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like confident in what it was trying to be at right. the times, you know. Like, and that's what it felt like. Like if it just went full send with the tentacles all the way through, I would have been more interested in the, yeah. the empty man itself. But you know, it is what it is. But I think that scene that was really chilling was when he looks out and his doors open and you see that lump, and I'm like, nah. I, I mean, I, I even said I was like, uh, uh, mm. Mm. and then it like peeks its head up, and I think it should have just stopped there, but then. It, charge forward and i was like okay classic horror stuff yeah, reaches for him gotcha. that's where it was kind of shoddy and things like that where it actually you know showed the empty man i think it would have benefited to not do that as much yeah i mean they tried to not show you as much as they could right it's like b movie style you know like yeah. use it with atmosphere but yeah once that reveal it wasn't very confident to me it was kind of like let's just go for all things <laughs> you know instead yeah. of like yeah Let's go for man with the trash bags, fucking tentacles, <laughs> fucking alien puking in his mouth, you know, like bring in the kitchen sink. <laughs> Send it. Send it. <laughs> but it was cool though. I mean, it was like yeah. it was still cool. And I mean, I don't know, what what's your guys' perspective on how is was this man alive before three days ago? Like, cause I That's feel a, like 
It's so interesting. That's what's so interesting about the whole back end of this movie because it's like speaking things into existence and then you think this is when we started seeing this guy at his birthday. Right. And it's just like, was he spoken to existence now? You know, yeah. I don't it know. Even like that little girl up. like waves at him after he has his birthday, you know, it's just, I don't know. Or no, it recognizes him, I guess. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I was, I was like struggling to like understand if how he could have been born three days ago with this backstory or whatever. So I was like thinking in my, in my mind of Canon, it's like, the cult infected him three days ago and he was like reborn or whatever, but it could go, it could be either yeah. way, which is kind of nice, you know, it leaves it open. So, yeah, I feel yeah. like he was born just because when he does call the mom again, she's like, who is it? Yeah. He's like, what are you talking? Who? Mm. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. That might be a little hint there for like what's yeah, real yeah. and what's not. So yeah. it's just, I mean, she's interesting. I mean, that chick starts rambling off. Like she's what she's saying. She's like, what hospital were you born in or whatever? Yeah, she so it's like oh, all he knows God. is he grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even, yeah. One of the, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but one of the funnier things was when he went to the cult and they were telling him about all this religion stuff. Um, and he was just like, "Look, man, I grew up in San Francisco. I get it, because you know they like do the crystal shit over there." So I, I don't know. I just felt like that was kind of like a like, "Hey, man, I know things are wild religiously <laughs> but these like, days, but but this wild." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you guys <laughs> notice? That... Uh... Surprise Elrond over there in the cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got triggered a little bit. <laughs> that cool cat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, that, he was I don't better know. in this. He was, he was decent. His, that man's like, you can't tell what age that guy is because he's playing like teen yeah. to like 30. Yeah. It's, I was like, yeah. <laughs> it's like hard to, I mean, good for him. He could probably play a lot of different age range or whatever. But yeah, it was kind of funny to see him in this, not, not elfing it up, you know. Overall, I, I mean, I, I, I'll probably land on four stars for this one just because I think the concepts are there, and it was just, mm. it's a good, good head scratcher. Makes me think, you know. Yeah. Nice. It's yeah. right up my alley. So. Yeah, you said four stars, right, Noah? Right away. Yeah. Yeah, that was my instinct. Yeah. Yeah. I was going for like three. I could potentially move it up, like three and a half, maybe four, with a little bit of thinking. I don't know. Yeah. I just kind of felt also like the, this was like a modern, like you said, Candyman. Like it's like this is what. You want twenty twenty emo kids to fucking smoke cigs on the bridge when they find a bottle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit, <laughs> empty man. So it's it's kind of like trying to build a lore that's kind of like silly to me at times too. But what kind of justified that for me was the the whole idea of the cult where they have to think of something to summon him. So it was kind of like their way. It's like, oh, what what do we know? Well, we know if you say Bloody Mary into a mirror, or if you say Candyman, they come into existence. So right. let's that's make true. a. A, a theme that can bring the empty man into existence and that was just the theme they went with because she was walking by and she was like let's do it you know so yeah, that's pretty good yeah it just flashed me to that scene where she was saying like sometimes i would picture myself not getting into a or getting into a car accident because nothing would happen when i yeah. picture it or whatever right that's i don't know i need to go back and watch what i'd say with the theme that you're in mind of like speaking things into existence or whatever more because i think it's it's more well-rounded in that theme probably too yeah. so yeah for sure. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, yeah that's a pretty good one. Uh, pretty good pick, I'd say. Yeah. Fun one. Yeah. Love me some horror films, so. Nice. Oh, show. Yeah, next week, a uh, whole new pick. Yes, whole sir. new chip out of the movie chest. This yeah. is your pick, right, Matt? Yeah, it'll be mine. So uh, probably something weird, sci-fi or conceptual. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We'll see. Yeah. But uh, join us next week, guys. See you then. Yep.